Everybody stop, 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 stop right there. Just drop everything you're doing and go read this. It's called I Have That Same Dream Again and uh, it's it's really short, it's really good. It I read it in like an hour maybe and yeah, just, just go read it. Though it does dabble with some potentially sensitive topics such as self-harm, substance abuse, and etc. But it's a story about overcoming those things and finding happiness and I feel like I learned a lot about life after reading that. Don't ask any further questions and go read it. Seriously, if that was enough to convince you, click off the video and go read it. That is my only purpose for this video. The rest of the video will just be me praising it and why you should go read it. I won't be going into much detail in plot and spoilers, hence the shorter length, but by the end of the video, I hope you have had this experience as well. Now for those of you who need more convincing, the rest of the video will be just that. So now for the actual intro and yep, okay, activating formal voice. I first came across this when I was reading a different manga. I checked it out at my local library, and at the end of the manga, there are a couple of pages that show other manga from the same publisher. And since I had nothing else to read, I thought, why the hell not check it out? So I did. I wasn't particularly excited for it, I thought it might be cute and heartwarming based off the cover, but nothing that leaves a permanent mark, but Jesus was I wrong. This was one of the best stories I've ever read, and it was the story with the biggest impact in my life so far. I can't be more serious, if you haven't read it already, go read it. I already recommended it to all my friends and my sister, and I want to share this with all of you guys too. Anyways, now that you've all read it, let's talk about the actual story. I shouldn't have to explain it since you all read it, but it's about Nanoka, a smart but naive elementary school girl. Though she doesn't really have that many friends in school, she has a few close ones outside of it. There's Skank, a single woman ostensibly in her 20s or 30s who gives Nanoka wisdom in a friendly way based off the mistakes she made in the past. There's Bachan, who is an old lady who lives alone in a big house in a forest who gives Nanoka sweets and treats her with affection like she is her own granddaughter. And finally, there is Minami, a high school girl, ostracized by society who resorts to self-harm as an escape. Almost instantly, a wholesome, cute dynamic is set up between Nanoka and each of these characters, but even then, this isn't at all a wholesome story. Skank was a social outcast who, in her loneliness and loathsome for her life, started to ruin her body through substances because it felt good to ruin her body. She was running out of money and turns to selling her body for money. Minami, I probably shouldn't have to explain why it isn't wholesome, but even Bachan, though she is happy and has accepted that she will die soon, the portrayal of her slow corporeal deterioration is depressing in its own way. When we first meet Honoka in grade school, we get an apathetic, almost lethargic impression of her as she traverses through her dull day at school. As an assignment, she must find out the nature of happiness and what exactly it is. Much of this short story is based on this project and how she manages to slowly figure it out through the help of other people more mature than her. And there are two main appeals within the story that draws me in and keeps me in. One is the obvious adorable characters with a refreshing naivete that you start to stop getting as you get older. It's things like finding genuine happiness in sweets and a good hearty meal. At heart, it takes many aspects of other Cute Girls Doing Cute Things series and twists it a little. The twist in question is the aforementioned dark truths about adult life and what is done to cope with these atrocities, which is often ironically more atrocious than the initial life-changing incident. The first instance of this is with Minami, whom Honoka runs into in an abandoned building. Minami is seen tired and jaded and sort of soullessly cutting into her own flesh. Honoka is startled by this grotesque sight, but still talks to her about it. After this, the two start to talk to each other to form an odd friendship. But the first encounter is something special with such a deep complexity that deliberately makes full use of the girl's innocence. Honoka is first freaked out and rushes to aid her, showing her benevolent nature as a young innocent child. Her heart, not yet corrupted by society and what have you, just wants to do the right thing for the time being. After that comes curiosity. It's a childlike curiosity in why someone would do something like that. The lack of a fully constructed concept of social norms lets her be brutally honest and say things like, are you wrong in the head? Only because she is so innocent is this one, okay, but two, possible. Someone a little more mature would never ask such a thing. Honoka's innocence is so charming and it plays a crucial part in the story. Again, it's a story about learning what happiness is and we see different views from different ages on what it is. A child takes not only pleasure, but genuine bliss in things like ice cream and playing with friends. Adults see it in similar things, but also find happiness and enjoyment out of the more messed up things like ruining their bodies. 
I bet drinking and doing other adult stuff feels really good, but it's not something you should constantly do. You can't have your happiness solely rely on stuff that will eventually kill you. This story tackles that from a child's perspective too. What being close to death feels like and how you've come to terms with everything in your life finally just waiting to breathe your last breath. Regret. The child's mannerisms and how she learns about these things is such an interesting thing. It sounds simple, but that simplicity makes for a rather avant-garde take on things. A motif we see in the story is a phrase. Life is like blank. It's something Honoka says to often describe, well, what life is like after she learns a new fact. She tends to veer towards simple, everyday objects and therefore really lets that innocent light shine. We really know that life is not like. Life is just life. There is nothing really we as humans can conceive as an apt comparison to life itself. But a child can because they can't see things in multiple nuanced views. It's not a malicious thing per se, she's just young and doesn't really have the experience needed to understand things. And in the end, though far from complete, Honoka finds a model with how she wants to live her life. Through all the lessons she has learned from the people around her, she can finally define happiness. It's a beautiful story. I didn't really go in depth with many plot points or spoiled much because I want you guys to experience this yourselves. That's why this is a shorter video. My only purpose for this one was to share this experience with at least one of you. I won't even ask the regular YouTuber stuff like subscribing, though if you want, go for it. Just know that even more than subscribing, the most you can do for me and yourself is to read it. It helped me see new views of happiness and how I should live my life, and I'm sure that it will hit home somewhere and somehow for every single one of you. I still sure as hell don't know much, but I am confident that this story will play a big part in my life. I'm confident that it will help you too, no matter the age. So do yourselves a favor, take one hour out of your day and have your life change forever. My name is Noah Boakoa, and life is like anime and manga. It's often shitty, but it's worth it to go through and find that one small gem. And thank you for watching.